Well, the, the idea uh, uh, came out of a conversation between uh, myself and Tom Carter, who is the president of the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz. And, and I happen to be the chairman of the same um, educational organization. It's a nonprofit organization. Uh, its home is in Washington, D.C. But uh, through these discussions, uh, we actually thought about three different proposals to make to uh, UNESCO. The, the first one being the establishment of an international jazz day. And the, the reason is because jazz has functioned in a lot of obvious ways as music that has made a lot of people over the planet very happen, very, very happy for a, 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 a number of, of decades, really since its in, uh, inception. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's been a music that has brought people together and, and it has been embraced by people from various cultures mm. as their own. It's not thought of as a foreign music. And we felt that it's long overdue that jazz be recognized in this uh, uh, very special way by an organization that really is the correct organization and the best organization for making the declaration that April 30th from this year, 2012, forward. Every year, April 30th would be International Jazz Day. I fell in love with jazz beginning at the time that I was uh, around 14 years old. This was 1954, so it's a number of years ago. I had already been playing classical piano for seven years, and uh, my high school used to have a variety show that we would give every semester by the students. This particular year, there was a jazz trio, and the piano player was my age in my class, and he was playing jazz, which I always thought of as my parents' music. And so I didn't pay that much attention to it. Yes, I knew it existed. I knew that it was good music, but my music was either classical music, which I was studying, and also ryth rhythm and blues, which was the m music that was played in, in, in the neighborhood, you know, black neighborhood in Chicago. Uh, Chicago being a, a, one of the homes of blues anyway. But uh, when I heard this, this young man who was a young boy, really, approximately my age, he was in my class, doing something on my instrument that I couldn't do, which was to improvise and to play with this, you know, nice beat. And, and also the, the girls seemed to, to like what he was doing too. So I said, I want to learn how to improvise, you know, because it seemed interesting to me. I didn't understand it. But I sensed that it was organized. That I could, could sense. Maybe that comes from, from my kind of scientific brain. You know, I have, I've always been interested in science since I was a kid, you know. So organization is something I could, could sense. And so anyway, I went to him after this uh, variety show. And I, I, I told him, I, I said, Don, I want, to, I want to learn how to improvise. I want to learn how to play jazz. And so, so he actually has suggested that I uh, get some records of the, of the jazz musician whose music he liked the best, so what which was, was George right? Shearing. And so I went home and, and, and I told my mother, I said, we got to get some George Shearing records. My mother said, we have George Shearing records. She said, you have George Shearing records. I said, no, I don't. What are you talking about? She says, remember two years ago when I brought you a Christmas present and you got mad at me because, it, well, the Christmas present was, a, was an album of, of 78 records, you know, 78 RPM records. And uh, you got angry with me because they weren't the records you wanted? I said, oh, yeah, I remember that. She said, those were George Shearing records and you have them in the, in the record cabinet. So I went to the record cabinet, opened it up, and there were these... George Shearing records. It was amazing. It was like sitting there in my house all, all, all along. <laughs> Can you hum out the the first uh, like jazz theme that you played on the yeah. piano? Don't do de da 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 don't do do de do do. 
You know what? <laughs> you know what the song is? No, what is it? I'll Remember April. Oh. That was the name of the song. That's what I just said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. No, <laughs> it wasn't April in Paris. No. It would have no, been no, nice no. if it were. No, no, no. You no. know, but that I, although perfect. I like that song too. Yeah. <laughs> I feel joy when anyone else is playing my music. Young, old, whatever. If a frog played my music, I'd be happy. <laughs> I guess anybody would be happy. <laughs> but but uh, because... It, it brings me joy that someone feels enough desire for my music and interest in my music that they would want to play it. But it brings me a special joy when there's someone who's young because the youth are really the, the builders of the future. They will create the world that our, our children and our children's children and so forth We'll, we'll, we'll live in. I mean, this is a, a process that's been going on since the, the beginning of humanity itself. Yeah. So um, recognizing that even in my life that there were people before me who are older than me that shared their music and shared their experience and their knowledge with me to help shape the kind of musician and the kind of person that I am today uh, I, I deeply feel the responsibility of doing everything I can to encourage young people and to share with them uh, my own experiences. Mm -hmm. And if they discover something about my music that they enjoy and that they want to reshape or they want to put their own spin on it, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm overjoyed at that because I love to hear what somebody else wants to do to my music. Siberia might be a place I might least expect to hear jazz or Antarctica or... Uh, but, but I wouldn't say Alaska, for example. I mean, I would think there are some jazz fans in Alaska. I haven't been there yet. Like, There's almost no place on the, on the planet where uh, I, I, I would be completely surprised that, that someone liked jazz, you know. Uh, although... Um, there are actually more than 50 countries that are participating in, in uh, International Jazz Day right now. Uh, I was actually surprised that they would, we say, throw their hat in the ring or become a part of the celebration. Mm. Yes, there may, may be fans in, that, in, in those countries, but, but I was surprised that they would actually decide to formally participate in International Jazz Day. You know, Oman, for example, mm. Malaysia. Well. I'm, I'm not completely surprised at Malaysia, but Republic of Moldova, uh, for example, and uh, so many uh, other, other, other countries mm. that uh, uh, <laughs> it, it actually blew my mind. <laughs>